Merhabalar. Löbet Paris Konferansı'nda söyleşilerimize devam ediyoruz. Son yılların en hızlı parlayan girişimlerinden bir tanesi Uber biliyorsunuz. Lüks araba servisi, şoförlü ya da şoförsüz. Kurucusu, yöneticisi Travis Kalinik yanımızda. Kendisi burada rastladık ve kabul etti söyleşi talebimizi. Hello Travis, thanks a lot, really a lot for accepting our request. Hey, I'm glad to be here and uh, happy happy to share uh, what Uber is about with you. Actually, it was two years ago when I first met Uber uh, in Loeb London conference, and then uh, Uber offered uh, some complimentary rides for the press. Yes. That was the first time, and that time there were only a couple of cities in Europe that Uber was functioning. Yes. And since then, uh, I've seen what I see is a tremendous, amazing growth. Yes. Uh, can you give us a hint about your the, this process of growth, a little? Yeah, I mean, look. Uh People who use it tell other people, and that's the core thing. It's just a word of mouth thing, and it grows, you know, 20 percent every month. And it starts small, but it gets big. And it, it reason why is because we're a new, we're an alternative for people to get around cities, uh, an alternative that's very convenient, very inexpensive, really high quality. And uh, people really need that in cities. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember that actually. In, uh, compared to the cab prices in London, actually Uber was uh, uber cheap. Yeah. It was really. And there's another problem here. And as far as I know, that you had similar problems in the U.S. as well. It's, it's about legislation. You know, there are sometimes problems, especially in Turkey. Also, I can talk about Turkey that there are serious problems about legislation if you establish such a uh, startup. How do you handle those situations? Because EU is a difficult region uh, in terms of legislation. Well, the way we look at it is, it's really city by city. There's some cities in the EU that are very easy to operate in, and then some cities that are not. It's not really about the EU generally. It's about the cities specifically. And how we deal with it is one at a time. We see what the laws are in that city, and if we can operate, we go there. Um, of course, when we get traction, uh, the taxi industry will try to create laws that outlaw competition. Uh, but uh, if our customers love what we do enough, uh, they speak on, uh, they speak out, and those laws don't get passed. Have you had so far any uh, such kind of problems in any European city? Sure. I mean, in Paris, they. Uh, they've proposed a 15-minute waiting time, so you you have to wait 15 minutes to get a car. This is like imagine checking into a hotel, getting to your door, like, and you you put the key in the car, the, the card in the door, and then it says you have to wait 15 minutes before you're allowed to enter your room. That's what they're trying to do here. Is like you have to look at your car and watch it for 15 minutes before you can get in. This is the kind of rules that they're proposing and. They don't make much, they don't make, there's not a lot of common sense there. They're trying to protect an industry um, and uh, well, hopefully, it, hopefully it doesn't happen. Uh, so you have a, I think you have a, an army of lawyers everywhere in the, in Europe. Well, look, I think the, the army is really our customers and they speak out and, you know, politicians listen to the people ultimately. And that's why we continue to operate in all the cities we've rolled out in. Okay, in okay, U.S., Europe, you cover, and in in the Middle East, you have Dubai. Uh, what about and what about your expansion plans in terms of the Central European countries or Middle East or North Africa? Or in India, in India, we're in Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Delhi. Uh, Africa, it's mostly South Africa right now, so uh, Cape Town. Johannesburg and Durban, um, but if it's a city, we're going to be there. That's how you should think about it. Do you have any plans about Istanbul? We have lots of plans for Istanbul, but the problem is, is the regulatory situation, the rules in Turkey right now don't allow us to operate. Oh, okay, we're well, still working on it, I guess. Well, I mean, we're trying, but the rules are so protective of the taxi industry that we will Unless there's a fundamental change in the rules, we, we won't be able to launch in Turkey. We won't be able to bring our innovation to Turkey. So, uh, bad, bad news. Um, let me switch to the question of payment systems. You're working with PayPal. And what do you think about generally in those new era of payment systems? We have really interesting and sometimes weird ways of payments. And you prefer PayPal, way of paying. 
Look, I, I prefer um, not having to get my wallet out, right? And so I think Uber provides that kind of experience. PayPal helps us do that in a bunch of countries in Europe, um, in South America, et cetera. So we're, uh, we're excited about our partnership with those guys. And, uh, and again, it's all about making it seamless for the customer. Yeah, maybe it's not in your coverage, but what do you think about digital banking? Uh, I don't know much about it. Okay, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you.